This time, we are going to have the operations and functions. Again, if f and g are functions defined at a real number x, then the sum of the functions is simply adding the two functions f of x and g of x. If we're looking for the difference, difference function, we simply subtract f and g of x. Or it could be the other way around, g minus f of x. It depends on the given difference. For the product function, we just need to multiply them. The function f of x and g of x. And for the quotient function, we also divide the two functions, f of x by g of x. And for the function to be defined, g of x should never be equal to zero. Or else, when the denominator is zero, the function becomes undefined. Let's take this example. Example in your module, and let me have my whiteboard. Now, in example number one for our module and for our lecture note, f of x is equal to 2x minus 1, while g of x is equal to 1 minus x. Now, we need to do the sum function. Also, we need to have the difference function. And last, not the last yet, the product function. And also, we'll solve for the quotient function. Now, let's start with the sum function. This is simply adding f of x plus g of x. Now, what is f of x? That is 2x minus 1. Then we add g of x. That's 1 minus x. So we have 2x minus x. The answer is x. 1, negative 1, plus 1. The answer is 0. So our sum function is x. Now let's go to the difference. For the difference, it's the same as writing as f of x dot g minus g of x. Our f of x is 2x minus 1 minus the g of x, that's 1 minus x. Now we copy the first one, f of x. Then we distribute the negative sign to the terms inside g of x. Negative 1 times 1, the answer is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative x, that's positive x. So now, we do the addition part. 2x plus x is equal to 3x. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So our difference function is 3x minus 2. Check it with your module or with your lecture notes. Next, we are going to solve for f g of x or the product function. This is simply multiplying f of x and g of x. Now, f of x is equal to 2x minus 1, while g of x is equal to 1 minus x. Let's do the FOIL method. 2x times 1 is equal to 2x. 2x times negative x is negative 2x squared. Next, inside, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Outside, last, negative 1 times negative x is equal to positive x. We just align them directly. So we don't have 2 plus 1, that's 3x, minus 2x squared, minus 1. But we need to arrange it from the highest exponent. 
So the answer is negative 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. This is now our product function. In the last one, we need to solve for the quotient function. This is the same as f of x over g of x. Now f of x is 2x minus 1. g of x is 1 minus x. These are already simplified. 2x minus 1 is in its simplest form, and y minus x is in its simplest form. So we could no longer reduce it. But remember, our denominator should never be equal to 0. We do a transposition. We transfer negative x to the other side. So our x should never be equal to 1. Or else, if x is equal to 1, and that's going to be 1 minus 1, the denominator becomes undefined. Take a screenshot before we go to example number two. In example number two, the given f of x is 3x minus 2. While the given g of x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. Now we need to solve for our a, our sum function. We also need to solve for our difference function. Also for our product function, and the last, our quotient function. Now, let's start with the sum function. This is equal to f of x plus g of x. So we have our f of x is 3x minus 2, plus our g of x is x squared, we need to align them, plus 2x minus 3. So the answer is x squared, 3 plus 2, that's 5x, negative 2 minus 3, that's negative 5. This is now a sum function. Next, let us solve for the difference function. This is equal to f of x minus g of x. So we have 3x minus 2 minus g of x, x squared plus 2x minus 3. We copy the f of x and we distribute the negative sign to the factors inside g of x. So we have negative times x squared is negative x squared. Negative times 2x, that's negative 2x. Negative times negative 3, that's positive 3. So our answer is negative x squared plus x plus 1. This is now our difference function. Now let's go to our product function. This is good as f of x times g of x. Our f of x is 3x minus 2, while our g of x is x squared plus 2x minus 3. So we have 3x times x squared. We do distribution property. That's 3x cubed. 3x times 2x, that is 6x squared. 3x times negative 3, that's negative 
9x. Next, the second factor. Negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. We simplify. That's 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus 13x plus 6. This is now our product function. Check it with the answer in the module or the lecture notes. The last one is what we call the quotient function. How are we going to do that one? Again, we need to do f of x over g of x. Our f of x is 3x minus 2, while our g of x is x squared plus 2x minus 3. We try to factor. The numerator is already in a simplified form, but the denominator can still be factored. So we have 3x minus 2 over the factors are x plus 3 and x minus 1. But these didn't have a common factor with the numerator. So we say that this is the final answer. But remember, x should never be equal to negative 3 and x should never be equal to 1. Or else, our expression becomes undefined. Let me have the last example for this operation. In example number three, f of x is equal to x squared plus 10x plus 25, while g of x is equal to x plus 5. Now, we need to find the quotient function. So only f over g of x. That is also written as f of x over g of x. Now our f of x is x squared plus 10x plus 25, while our g of x is x plus 5. Our denominator is already simplified, but the numerator can still be factored. That is x plus 5 times x plus 5. If you notice, they have a common factor with the denominator, so we just cancel it. It becomes 1. So what's left? x plus 5. This is the quotient function of f of x and g of x. That ends the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of functions.